Now the MacBook Pro has been my go-to since 2012 and by far this is the best upgrade I've got. The 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch was horrible for me at least, even though it was almost a maxed out version and actually was just a small upgrade going from the 2017 15 inch. But oh my is the M1 Pro the best upgrade I've ever had with extremely low thermals and power consumption. But this has not been good enough to keep, so I'm returning the MacBook. But let me tell you why, and no this computer is not a terrible computer, it just isn't what I want. I purchased a 14 inch MacBook Pro with 10 core CPU and 16 core everything else with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I did get the one terabyte version as well, but that doesn't really mean it's a bad thing. Now I use the 15 and 16 inch MacBooks for everything. For work, YouTube videos, travel, etc. Personally, the larger size is somewhat cumbersome at times, but not enough to make me ignore this model. The 14 inch has been amazing, being slightly larger than the 13 inch and dramatically smaller than the 15 inch MacBook it is technically replacing. But size difference to size, why am I returning this? Initially, I wanted a base 14 inch MacBook for traveling in light usage until I could afford the 16 inch literally maxed out. I used a 2012 MacBook until 2018, so keeping a device for a long time is not foreign to me. I do edit 4K at 60 frames per second, which isn't the worst, but adding titles and such just slows down the computer and gives me lots of stutters. Well, that was before the M1 Pro. The M1 comes close, but when you mix the M1 Pro with the ProMotion display, it just causes the timeline in Final Cut Pro to run super smooth, even with rendering turned off. Finally, I got a computer that I love, but I do need at least 2 terabytes. But also, why not 4 terabytes? Well, 16 gigabytes of RAM is cool, but 32 gigabytes or higher will help future-proof this computer. So technically, I should go with the M1 Max over the M1 Pro. Double the encoders will be perfect for video editing. Now the computer that I have is $2,500, and then we upgrade to a 16 inch, we add a few extra things, we max it out, and then boom. We're at ultimately a $3,600 difference or $300 a month for 12 months. Now, I would never recommend actually financing a MacBook because one, you can't really finance that way. You have to pay the entire thing and it has to be through an Apple card. So I find it really difficult to do. Also, I find it impossible to do that on the Mac Pro. Nobody's gonna be able to finance 30, 40, or even $50,000 on an Apple card if I can't even finance $6,000. And no, you can't split it with gift cards or do a down payment. It's pretty much you can have all on one card and finance it, or you can do split payments, but you have to pay the entire thing, which is crazy to me. But I would also not really recommend financing a MacBook because if you can't afford it, you should probably not buy it, especially in this situation. However, in my case, I make videos and I'm trying to turn that into a living. And if you're trying to do the same thing, maybe you should finance it. So with the option of double the performance in four times the convenience, with the exception of larger size, that extra $3,600 just makes sense. $6,100 is outrageous for a computer though. I would never recommend getting anything past stock if you're not going to do something like video editing or coding or anything major like that. Better yet, if you want two computers, I would stick to the M1 Pro for a 16 inch computer and an M1 MacBook Pro going with a 13 inch. I wouldn't recommend the Air for the lack of extra GPU core, though it isn't a huge performance difference. Actually, I've been using the MacBook Air and it's actually a really good deal. But the 13 inch MacBook Pro seems a little bit better in my eyes. To sum up this video, I will be using the M1 MacBook Air in the time being while waiting for the 16 inch to come in, which is another reason why I don't recommend doing what I'm doing unless you really need to. The 14 inch is amazing, especially seeing that performance can be almost exactly the same as the 16 inch, just with a $200 price difference. I'm curious to see if my delivery date will change or whether or not I will love it, but we will find out. I'm also interested in getting a hold of the next generation M processors, you know, like a MacBook M1, so look forward to those types of videos. I'm speaking literally because the ad revenue will definitely help me fund those videos, because they are going to be pretty expensive. Also, any of the Amazon links you see in my videos will help me make a little bit of extra money so that I can afford to pay for all this stuff, so that would be appreciated too. Hope this helps you decide on whether or not to go with a 14 or 16 inch MacBook. I love the 14 inch for portability, but I'm getting the 16 inch for usability. Who knows, I might get a smaller version next year. I did do that with the iPhone. 
Either way, let me know what you think in the comments and the socials listed above. And as always, thanks for watching.